If we zoom deeper and deeper inside the human body until we reach a cell, we can access the nucleus, where the DNA is located. But what is DNA? Short for deoxyribonucleic acid, it is a molecule that codes for the entire body. It codes for every characteristic that living beings possess, such as eye color and hair color. It was first discovered in 1869 by Friedrich Miescher, a Swiss scientist. So, now let's see how the DNA is structured. DNA consists of two strands which are composed of nucleotides. The nucleotides are composed of three molecules, phosphate, sugar and the base. There are four different types of bases called adenine which is symbolized by an A, thymine which is symbolized by a T, guanine which is symbolized by a G and cytosine which is symbolized by a C. These nucleotides are linked together and form a long strand. These strands are bound together thanks to hydrogen bonds connecting the bases of one strand to the bases of another strand. But due to the molecular composition of the four bases, a thymine base can only be connected with an adenine base and a guanine base can only be connected with a cytosine base. These two strands then coil around each other to form a spiral. During cell division, an extra copy of DNA is needed so that the two new cells will have the same genetic material than the original cell. The process where DNA is copied, so doubled, is called replication. But how does it work? Firstly, the enzyme called helicase will unzip the original DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds holding them together. Enzymes are substances produced by a living organism which provoke a specific biochemical reaction. Once the DNA has been divided, the enzyme called DNA polymerase will add the correct nucleotides to the original strand, making sure that adenine is paired with thymine and cytosine with guanine, vice versa. Now you may want to know how long this process takes. It depends on the organism. For example, the bacteria replication can occur at a rate of 1,000 nucleotides per second. In contrast, human DNA replication occurs at rates of 50 nucleotides per second. In general, replication takes place rapidly as multiple polymerases can th synthesize two new strands at the same time. But considering the fact that both strands have opposite directions, and that DNA can only be synthesized in one direction, one strand, called the leading strand, can be synthesized continuously while the other strand, the lagging strand, must be synthesized in separate fragments that are completed by an enzyme called ligase to form a complete newly copied strand. Apart from replication, DNA has another function, protein synthesis. But what are proteins? They are building blocks of life as a big proportion of a cell structure is composed of them. What's more, a type of protein called enzymes carry out vital function and speed up chemical reactions. So they are essential to all living beings. And depending on which part of the DNA is read, different proteins are synthesized so different functions are carried out. That's why different types of cells exist. Proteins are synthesized in two steps, transcription and translation. Transcription. It is the first step of protein synthesis in which strands of DNA are copied into messenger RNA. In this process, which happens in the nucleus, the DNA is unzipped and an enzyme called RNA polymerase moves along the unwind DNA producing pre-mRNA. When there is a C, it is complemented by a G. When there is a G, it is complemented by a C, T by an A, but A is complemented by a U, which is short for uracil. This pre-mRNA is then edited by ribonucleic proteins, which take out the useless parts called introns. The useful parts called exon remain and form mature mRNA. These mature mRNAs are then transported out of the nucleus to ribosomes to be translated into proteins in a process called translation. But first, 
It is important to know that every mRNA is composed into sequences of three bases called codons. Each codon codes for one of the 20 essential amino acids. For example, the codon ACG codes for threonine, with the exceptions of UGA and UAG and UAA, which are known as stop codons and AUG, the start codon, which also codes for the amino acid methionine. A mRNA must start with the start codon and stop with the stop codon. Now that we've seen the way mRNAs are composed, let's return to translation. So the first codon is read and a transfer RNA, short tRNA, with the matching anticodon is temporarily bound to the mRNA. Each tRNA has an amino acid attached to it, depending on the anticodons it has. For example, the tRNA with the anticodon UAC has the amino acid methionine attached to it. Because the codon to which this tRNA is going to bind to is AUG, the codon that codes for methionine. After the first tRNA is attached, the second codon is read, and a tRNA with the matching anticodon and amino acid comes and binds itself to the second codon. Then another type of RNA, rRNA, short for ribosomal RNA, creates a bond between the two amino acids. Once the bond is completed, the first tRNA detaches from the mRNA, leaving behind the beginning of an amino acid chain, called polypeptide. This process is repeated for the third, the fourth codon, etc. and a long polypeptide chain is obtained. After a while, there will be a stop codon, indicating that the amino acid chain is finished. The process of translation is completed. The finished polypeptide chain then folds itself and forms a protein. To sum up, there are three important processes in which genetic material is involved. Replication, where DNA is copied. Transcription, where DNA is copied into RNA and translation, a process where proteins are synthesized out of RNA's information.